You may be wondering why we need some new tool like this dynamic business modeling at all. Well, the reality is that things are not as good as we might wish them to be in our planning and management of business issues and plans. Many initiatives fail altogether, or if they don't fail, then they fall short of delivering the outcomes and the benefits and the performance improvements that we hope that they would uh, deliver. Failure rates among new ventures are still unacceptably high, and strategies in existing businesses, whether for the whole organisation or for functions within the organisation, very often uh, disappoint. We just don't get the kind of long-term sustained performance improvements that we hope for when we set out those uh, plans. So there is an opportunity to improve the outcomes from the initiatives that we take and from the plans that we put together. So to just explore where that opportunity comes from, let's start by thinking about how we think we're going to get better performance from our existing methods. And there are lots of existing methods for problem solving and planning in different functional areas of the business for different issues. And there's many, many frameworks and tools and business model approaches if we're trying to put together an overall strategy for an organisation. But whichever of those problem solving and planning methods you are using, there is an assumption that somehow or other it will help us get improved performance. We might be looking to improve operational performance, like fixing a service quality problem or reducing staff turnover or reducing product development lead times, those kinds of operational improvement uh, things that we, we hope to achieve. Or we may be looking for some rather more strategic benefits, substantial increases in our market share or penetration of a new market, fighting off a competitor, successfully making an acquisition and integrating that into our, our business. And those operational and strategic improvements we hope will come through and generate financial uh, improvements as well. Better cash flow and returns to investors. Uh, and on top of that, improvements in the wider world. You know, better prospects for our staff, better experiences for our customers, better contributions to society and the economy. Now, we have got pretty substantial methods for monitoring and adjusting things in the light of the performance that actually results. So we look at the performance that's actually happening, we compare it with what we hoped would happen, and our KPI system, balance scorecards, and our budget and plan review processes, we hope will help us figure out how to monitor and adjust what we're doing. The thing is, though, we need to figure out what to change and in what way we hope that those changes will improve performance and by how much those changes will improve performance. So whether you're starting new plans and issues or whether you're trying to monitor and adjust existing plans and programs that are underway, there are a couple of grey areas here. And the reason there are grey areas in the middle there is that we are lacking the crucial ingredient, which is a time phase action plan. It's a rather simple idea. It's simply a statement of who is going to do what, when, how much, in all the teams and functions involved in the issue or the strategy, uh, with what outcome. So you know, what exactly are we going to do to improve service quality? What exactly are we going to do to see that uh, increase in market share or market penetration uh, happen. Now, if we did have such a time phase action plan, then those monitoring and adjustment systems would have something actually to uh, work on. They would be able to tell us how to adjust those time phase action plans in such a way that we can be somewhat confident about the performance improvement that would result. For simple issues and for simple plans, we've always been able to rely to some degree on the experience and judgment of people who've been around for a while. You know, they've worked in the organisation for a long time, they've worked in the industry for a long time, they've got a good idea how to develop plans for staffing or how to improve service quality in their particular setting. The problem is, as I explained in a, another of these videos, things are not always simple enough. 
we have these critical factors accumulating over long periods, customers being won and lost, staff being hired and developed, adding to the product range or the capacity of the organisation. There are lots of interdependencies between those different parts of the system, and we get feedback happening between those interdependent parts. Then we've got threshold effects happening, where everything seems to be going fine, uh, for a long, long time, and all of a sudden it isn't going fine anymore because we've crossed some threshold. And of course, we've got intangible factors intervening in all of this, uh, how people feel about things, for example. So when you've got these kinds of factors imposed on the situation that we're trying to manage, then it's hardly surprising that every now and again, experience and judgment really are not good enough to tackle these larger, more complex issues or plans. So that is why we need models. Models allow us to test and manage the strategies and plans that we have been trying to figure out. And there's nothing unique about this in the business environment. We've been doing this for, with complex challenges in all kinds of other fields for, for decades, frankly, whether engineering challenges or trying to figure out how drug products work in the body. Simulation and modeling has been just an accepted way that you do things. And uh, we're now at a point where we can do the same thing for improving uh, business performance. So a system model solves the challenge of raising performance over time because what it's doing is it's capturing this system that somebody or some team has designed. Uh, they may have done it intentionally or it may have not been written down explicitly, but any enterprise is a design system of some kind. So what a model helps us to do is to design that system in the first place so it is capable of performing well. Then, once the system is going, we can get the information about how it's actually performing, we can compare it with how the model thinks it ought to be for performing, and we can use that to manage the system continually so it actually does perform well and fulfills its uh, potential. Now, of course, life always uh, throws up new challenges and opportunities, so the third thing that a system model allows us to do is to fix the system if problems arise or if new opportunities happen. Just a last comment. We can do this at many different levels of the business. We, we can certainly do it for the organisation as a whole, for the whole business or the business unit that we're interested in. But we can also model what's going on in any part of the organisation, a subdivision of the business unit, for example, or a particular function, maybe the staffing strategy or what's happening in the customer service team. And... We can use these models for two purposes. We can use them to tackle one-off issues. Fixing that service quality issue that's uh, been bothering us and been getting worse over recent months. How to deal with threats or take opportunities that uh, present themselves. And uh, how to implement quite challenging initiatives. Perhaps we want to push through some organisational change initiative, which is not going to be trivial. But then we can use models as well to develop and manage a continuing long-term plan, whether that is for the whole enterprise, you know, the strategic plan for the business, or strategic plan for launching a new enterprise, or long-term plans for particular functions. What is the staffing strategic plan? What is the strategic plan for IS development? Those kinds of things. So as I say, we can use models uh, at any level and for either of those two purposes.